So hi everyone, um, we're about to do the commentary for the DVD of Swim Fan. My name is John Polson, I'm the director of the film and I'm sitting here with... Erica Christensen, Madison Bell, that's the character that I play. And I'm Jesse Bradford, I play Ben Cronin uh, and uh, I want to be an astronaut when I grow up. <laughs> <laughs> so um... Creepy music. Here we are, a little <laughs> creepy music to start. Not my hand. Some guys oh, that's hands. not your hand, no, <laughs> no, you're absolutely right. That That's um... Oh, I don't know if I ruined the magic. That's a that's a double we had, a real cello player. And that's not me either. <laughs> no. <laughs> that's my name though. I should probably say that this actually wasn't scripted, this sequence. The, the movie started with just the kissing and we found when we screened it that when we got to the Jake Donnelly role, you know, people didn't really know it came out of the blue a bit, so it was kind of interesting to have these shots of the trophy and you playing the cello up front. Give a little bit of backstory of where, we're, you know, yeah. where the movie's... Exactly. So where, yeah, where it's gonna go. It feels a little like it comes full circle now. With a little heads up. Yeah. <laughs> right. So it was kind of interesting. Cello lessons came in handy here. <laughs> <laughs> cello lessons once we started filming. Yeah, absolutely. That was a crash course. So what was it like? Two or three weeks of pretty intense. Yeah, and I actually I felt like I took to it pretty well, but getting vibrato is really difficult. Oh, here we go. Look. Great shot. I think that's yeah. genius. No, this was the last dividing us. From the start. Yes. <laughs> this gives you an idea. This was the last day of the shoot, if you remember. Yeah, it was. Doing the, right. Really, what is the opening shot of the movie? Yeah. Nice um, metaphor there. <laughs> I'm, I'm going <laughs> to... So that was a beautiful place in New York. I mean, yeah. people should know this movie was shot mostly in and around Manhattan. Yeah. Um, the pool was in Harlem. Right. I was um, just up there yesterday. Yeah. So this is really where the kind of narrative kicks off, I suppose, after a title sequence. Jesse Bradford swimming, the real Jesse Damn Bradford. Straight. And <laughs> with some nice form. Why, thank you. You're welcome. Worked hard. Yeah, I know. You were That's, insane. Yeah, I was a, I Every was a day. trooper. And we have Kate. That, that dog, I love dogs. That dog had the worst breath. <laughs> Man, I just remember that thoroughly. <laughs> it's one of those things where you see the dog and you all you can think about is the breath, you know? <laughs> and that was Kate and that was Kate Burton. By that was Kate Burton. Yeah, Kate you, you weren't talking about actress. you weren't talking about No, no Kate, Bur Jeez. Kate Burton's breath was marvelous from my memory. <laughs> she's actually a wonderful actress. Yeah. A lot of stage people know actress. she's a, yeah. a stage actress on Broadway. She got nominated for um two whatever they give to yeah. Two Tonys, yeah. <laughs> whatever they give to stage actors. <laughs> I like this song too. <sighs> Get stuck me, in my head. Goofball. Too Joe Caracciola. Soon, our producer. That's the producer That's the right, right there. Well, the producers of the movie. Yep. All right, watch. I thought it was ironic that he'd play the policeman. Give Jesse yeah, right. the look <laughs> that he gave me <laughs> throughout the whole movie. Now, did he have a broken foot hiding under the uh, the, the driver's seat yeah, that's there? That's right. He had a broken At foot at that point for most or not? Movie, yeah. yeah. He broke his foot like two days into shooting. <laughs> so this is obviously set up. I mean, I think you know a lot of movies. You want to just get the feel for the town they live in and, the, you know, the guy we're going to be following right. through the story. Big man on campus, he's got buddies everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> but the film really kicks off in this scene coming up where yeah. you meet with the coach. Yeah. And talk about the next couple of weeks. Yeah. Dan is also awesome. I didn't get to work with him. Dan Hedaya, definitely one of the best actors I've ever worked with. How you feel? Yeah, he's very good. Yeah. I, we were lucky he's, to get him. He's one of those guys you yeah, want to get. You yeah, know, totally. In, in what is not a huge role, but a kind of very important yeah. role in the movie. Yeah. Get it, under 45, I think. it was really cool working with him and then watching his performance afterwards. It's um, very different. It's, yeah, it's yeah. like it doesn't feel the same as when you're there. It's it's weird. For the next eight days, I want you living in that pool. This reminds me of the deleted scene that came later in the steam room. When Jason's quoting yeah. him, Jason Ritter's quoting him. Yeah, yeah, if you're not, uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah I, I, want you. I wonder, that'll probably make it on the DVD, huh? Yeah, I think yeah. we're going to, in the in the deleted scenes, we'll, we'll have that scene. I mean, as you know, just talking about that, that was one of our favorite scenes. It was yeah. a great scene in the movie, but it's funny when you watch the whole thing with an audience, you can just feel where scenes have to come out, and that was definitely one of them. You know, it was, yeah. it was great in isolation, but yeah. in terms of the bigger picture, it didn't really help. I yeah. love that yeah. look that Sherry gives to Klain right there. She looks yeah. at him like, what are you doing? <laughs> this was a lot of fun to shoot because it was kind of a lot improvised. Yeah. People just sitting around, remember, and, and just You talking. know, I we... feel like you can say that about a lot of the scenes where it was like all the friends. Yeah. You know, like, I, I feel like you let us be really loose and that was cool. 
Yeah, you can tell. I think it looks. Yeah, it, it looks really off. natural. I feels natural. We had we had two cameras on all of this stuff, so that you could pretty much improvise, and we were able to piece yeah. it together. Yeah. We didn't have to repeat things exactly as you do in a lot of scenes. Little overlapping dialogue. My yeah. two favorite words in the world. <laughs> Jimmy DeBello. Jimmy DeBello. <laughs> what can you say about Jimmy? Uh, that was so awesome to cast him because he's he played the role so interestingly. Like you, it's just unexpected. Yeah. Everything he does, you just don't know yeah. what he's gonna do next. The the favorite the favorite son of the movie, you know. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, originally that character, you know, just going back a few drafts in the script was kind of the fat guy. He was just, just supposed to be a dork like at so first, obvious, right? Yeah. yeah. And and then Jimmy came in, and there was something about him was so kind of. I don't know, a little strange. Oh. Not, not the real Jimmy, but the one he kind of gives out. And it just seemed right, yeah. you know, put some glasses on him and he would be yeah. quite an intimidating but a very interesting character. And it's proved to be, you know, it's proved to be successful. He's definitely one of the characters that the people come out of to, you know, the movie talking about afterwards. Yeah. And rightly, yeah. rightly so. Yeah. He's, he's so, can... like, he draw, the character really draws you in. Yeah. So the first time you he's... meet him, you're just like... What's this guy gonna do in the movie? You it's know? so subtle, and everything yeah. you're just thinking, what is going on inside that head? Yeah, and I think what? a lot of the people this movie was made for, namely mostly you know kids in school and stuff like that, uh, can relate to him in some way. Yeah. He's the kind of yeah. outsider, you know, and and for whatever reason, I mean, whenever we had test screenings, his character always went through the roof in terms of yeah. people, you know, responding to him. And yeah, he's he's extremely smart. You can tell he he figures out how to work things and ends up you know being the hero almost like. Yeah. This is an interesting scene because we had really about 10 seconds to establish how important this relationship yeah. is. And it's yeah. not easy. Yeah. It works yeah. so well. You guys look so sweet real together. And it's real. You know? Absolutely. And have it and it be was all, something that matters throughout the movie. It was all very improvised and, yeah. and uh, it came out, came out great. And of course, we meet, finally, we meet dun, Erica. Dun, dun, dun. Yeah. After seeing her That's car a, drive yeah. up and all that sort of it's stuff. It's a great first shot of you, too, with just the mouth, and, <laughs> you know? I can't get this stupid thing open, and I'm late for English. Do you think you can this was an interesting scene to, to cut because, you know, we put some music with this originally, mm -hmm. and you just knew where this girl was going to go in a bad way. People oh, right. yeah. could see the end. Creepy music. Yeah, we, we had a, a little, little just like, <laughs> well, it wasn't quite that creepy. <laughs> and then when we tried pulling it out, it just made a lot more sense, and you didn't know what to think, you know. Yeah. Obviously, at this point, the last thing you want is people knowing the end of the movie. Yeah, I mean, yeah. everybody's seen the trailer. Everybody knows kind of what the story's going to be. But you don't want to sort of overplay that hand too much at this point. And, and, and I think pulling the music out really worked well. That was yeah. really interesting for me because I knew the whole time that she was going to go nuts. And it was so hard to kind of hold that in once I knew. Yeah. You know, yeah. to just play a sweet girl at the beginning because I, I already knew she was not yeah, a sweet yeah, girl. Yeah. Well, that was definitely, I'd say, you know, one of the things we talked about a lot in mm -hmm, rehearsal mm -hmm. and right the way through the shoot was you and I sitting down and saying, okay, how kind of nuts do we want her to be at this point? Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, and, and I mean, the last thing you want is, and we frankly, we had it in early cuts of the movie where as soon as Erica arrives, you kind of know. But what we realized was a lot of that was music was kind of signaling oh. too much where she was going. So Yeah. Right. And I, I've always... Uh, the term I always use that I that I compliment you with, Erica, is that you held the psycho card really close, right. you know. And and yeah. <laughs> I've heard you say that. Yeah, yeah, I like saying that. <laughs> that's that's cool. I tried. Yeah, and here we are worked. establishing. <laughs> thank you, establishing more of what you're gonna lose. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Nice job, Mr. Tillman, who cracks me up. Yeah, he was funny. And who almost you know gets killed later in the movie, of course. So. So he had to be that like right. likable guy, you right. know? Yeah, yeah, he had to be likable guy, and also we had to see him, you know. So this yeah. scene yeah. on the surface doesn't really mean a lot, but actually, of course, you know, there's no point having a character almost die later in the movie if we don't know who it was exactly. in the first place. So. Right. There were lights at the bottom of the water there to create that effect. Remember that? I didn't yeah. even know you guys that. Sunk lights like ten feet down yeah, in that yeah, bay. Yeah. That was yeah. out on Long Island. Yeah. That was so a nice Giles place. Oh, boy, this shot took like 18 times, yeah. man. Remember that? That was a tough shot. It was. It was a very hard shot and, and a creative it's, one. It's too. one of those things, you know, we never end up using half of it. I mean, the reason it yeah. took so long is we had a reflection of a boat going by. Yeah. And then, of course, you sit down and watch the movie, and you're like, you know what? That's kind of boring. Yeah. And so we <laughs> yeah. cut that out. Yeah. But I just want to mention here Giles Nutchins, who's the DP on mm. this film, um, who did an extraordinary job. This was... Although you see the Fox logo at the front of this movie, it was actually made as an independent movie, and Fox, 
you know, picked it up and, and we didn't have a lot of money to make this film with and Giles did made it look like I think a really big studio yeah. movie. He really made it look sure. beautiful. Yeah, here, he, here. he did. And and he, he didn't have a lot of time. I mean, mm -hmm. we had like thirty six days to shoot this film and, and really we were trying to make a film that would compete with movies that get shot in sixty or eighty days and, yep. and Giles is really, you know, the number one uh, reason why we're able to make it look like this in such a short amount of time. Giles and Kalina Ivanov, who was the designer mm -hmm. of the film. Right. Thought I'd get a little lane time in before the So now we introduce Josh, Clayne Crawford's character. A little competitive exactly. action. Yeah. Set up that, that, you know, Josh is definitely the, the kind of fun guy on the team. He doesn't take it that seriously, but when he hears the scouts are coming to town, it's probably the first time Ben's ever seen him in, in here at like 6 a.m. Yeah. or whatever it is. Yeah. <coughs> and setting up that bat. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what? Word is she's a senior, originally from down south. So you know I'm planning on hearing that little southern accent when she moans my name. I'm not like when she applies for the restriction. I mean, it's an interesting film to cast this. You know, we, we met a lot of actors. Um, we had great casting directors. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, met, met everybody um, for this movie. And, you know, because. We wanted all the performances to be absolutely spot on. I think we, you know, worked really hard to make sure that everybody. In fact, Klein's role was one of the last to be cast because, it's, although there were a lot of people wanting to play that part, and I met, I must have met 50 Joshes. Yeah. It wasn't until he sent a tape up from where he was shooting another film, I think, in North Carolina or something. Right. That I thought that's the guy. Yeah. Almost without meeting him, I just said, I, you know. I remember, I remember that. Yeah. I remember that he stole the read through. Remember oh, that? Yeah. He did. Yeah, totally yeah. stole the read totally through. He totally walked out of the room with the read through. Yeah, I, I basically. Yeah. <laughs> we had that two hour sort of sitter, and he was so great, so funny. Yeah. yeah. And that was only was literally a about a week after we, we cast him. Oh, oh yeah. 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 The, now, this was scary to shoot because I was standing right in front of a moving car. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but it, it looks really great. It looks nice and close, which it was. Remember that? Uh, remember, I thought I. Knew somebody or what? What is it? Yeah, I it's, I coming, up. Yeah, it's I coming up right here. That's a slick little I love line. That line. We, we made that great. up that yeah. day. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> a lot of this stuff, I think, it's important. You know, if you want to make it look real, to let the actors go. And I mean, my background is acting, so I've kind mm -hmm. of been on the other side where I feel like, hey, what do I have to stick to these lines? You know, if 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 I can say something that's just as natural. I mean, obviously, you have a writer for a reason, and nine times out of ten, they can come up with a better line than you. But when you get out there, <laughs> you get out there, and you know you've got the car and the street and all that stuff to deal with. Sometimes it's just better to see yeah. what comes out. Yep. And we did quite a lot of that. I love this shot. This was the first shot of the movie. Yeah. Uh, of, of of the actual schedule. Oh yeah. Right. You know, yeah. I remember was. getting there. We were all a bit nervous, and uh, we set that up. You remember that it was day one of the shoot. I don't even remember that that was day one. It was a, you get out. It was I'm going to tell blur. you something about this shot coming up. Is when we got back to Daly's, there was a reflection of Giles, the DP, in this window that you're about <gasps> there to see is, in the really? car. No, but we spent some money to get rid of it. And I, right there, that was him. Whoa. Oh, wow. And I, I don't mean it was almost him. I mean it was a clear photo oh, of him. Oh, and there's Giles. The and we had uh, other takes, but that, that was, was the, the take one. I wanted. Yeah. Yeah. And we spent some money. I don't think it was a great deal. And a little I was CGI amazed. in there. Yeah. Sweet. <clears throat> wow. I was amazed that they were able to get in there and just get rid of him altogether. See, even we learn things here. Right, Erica? That's right. <laughs> Setting up that club. That's exactly what I was going to say. We established Ben's life so thoroughly. Yeah. All the things that are going to go horribly wrong. Oh, and what is this? Was this an accident? Hardly. <laughs> <laughs> Madison accidentally leaves her notebook in the... This was quite car. a big scene originally. Remember, Jesse, your mom, Kate Burton, comes in yeah. and do the whole cookie thing. And yeah. again, it was one of those things you you watch and you feel, you know what? I mean, I think a good movie or a good story is like about giving information that you really need to yeah. tell the story. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sometimes stuff just isn't needed. You know? Yeah. And I, I know what we were getting at with that. We should probably explain what it was. Huh? Yeah. It was like yeah. mom coming in and just saying, oh, I'm proud of you. And she brings me like a brownie or something. Right. And yeah. I'm like, no, I can't eat it. I can't. I can't. I'm training. And she's like, yeah. uh, oh, come on. Just do it. And I'm like, oh, fine. And we, we kind of had a couple other things like that, too, of showing that Ben is sometimes a guy who can't say no. Yeah. And we thought that was important. Uh -huh. we, we You're spent a pushover, young yeah, man. Yeah, exactly. We were, exactly. Yeah. We, we spent a lot of time trying to justify sort of Ben's poor choices yeah. so that you still like him at the end of the movie, you know? Yeah, yeah. And that was one of them, but another one on the cutting room floor. Exactly. I, <laughs> I mean, what, what you do is, you know, it's not always clear in the script 
or certainly when you're shooting it. But when you sit back with an audience, yeah, you go, yeah. You know, she's proud of him, but I kind of know that because she's his mom. You know, yeah, and, totally. And, right. and you yeah. kind of feel that in the first scene in the kitchen. Oh, you guys reversed that shot, didn't you? Yeah, we did. Yeah, you flipped it. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. I was really walking left to right the way they shot it, and they, they flipped it. Oh, for that's yeah. very reason. cool. Was that just so it would match this better? It was exactly that. I mean, yeah. it's a cutting thing. It's a screen direction thing. When you have someone walk out the right side of a frame, you really want them to walk in on the left. Exactly. And, uh -huh. and it was just kind of poor planning on my part, so we ended up hey. flipping it. <laughs> gotcha. That's fantastic. <laughs> This is such a great scene with Jimmy. I have, yeah. I'd say it's the only it's the only yeah. shot we flipped in the whole. Yeah, it sure <laughs> is. <laughs> now we're if gonna be looking. That. Mm. <laughs> and I love this shot here. This was also about day one and day two, back yeah. of the house. Right. Because we remember we spent the first week at Madison's house. Yeah. And right. Obviously, the way it has to work is you know if you're at a location, you shoot it out while you're there. So. Yep. Now this is the little ghostly effect we've got going on here, where Madison <laughs> just face. shows up. I know. Well, kind awesome. of, kind of. I it's mean, very, we we de-emphasized that a yeah. little, didn't we? Because it was like corny almost. Yeah, you know? yeah. And it sort of came well, out of the blue. It's very subtle, though. It's not. I yeah. mean, it's still yeah. there in a way. If you the way it's cut now, but I don't think many people. I mean, just so people know what we're talking about. Originally, that was shot in a way that yeah. we put a double up on the balcony, and as soon as Erica, in inverted commas, disappeared, she <laughs> reappeared in the door. And not not so like a ghostly like, thing, just yeah. almost like a. How did she? Yeah, yeah, how'd she get there so fast? Kind right. of thing. Yeah, and, and I when, think it sounded cool on paper, then it actually came out. Yeah, so we ends up looking like a, a Monty Python movie or something, <laughs> where it's yeah. like, what? Why did yeah. that happen? You know. So this was oh, obviously yeah. a big, well, it's almost big a night. subconscious effect. This is a great scene. I think this is the longest scene that that's in the movie yeah. in terms of dialogue. Yeah. In terms of us just memorizing it and just go plowing through it like yeah. eighteen times over the course yeah. of the night. And this was a night shoot too, wasn't it? We this were up was, all night uh, in this Brooklyn. This was pretty on this much one, I think. what we're seeing in the yes. Bronx. No, Brooklyn. No, no, it Brooklyn. was Brooklyn. Brooklyn. Yeah. And yeah. I remember I had I had like a Marvin Gaye song stuck in my head all night. You I was did? like, brother, brother. <laughs> I remember that. <laughs> Do you remember? Yes. I had it stuck in my head for like a that. week. You had it stuck in my head that night. And stuck in the and, cruise and Marvin head. And Marvin Gaye will Everybody. come back to haunt us a little <laughs> right. later. Right, we'll, we'll address that a little yeah. later on. <laughs> I play cello, and I just float out of my body, up above the music where no one can touch me. What I love about this scene is, is it's probably, like you said, Jesse, the longest scene in the movie. Yeah. Um, and the most important. I mean, I as a filmmaker, I, I'm not... I kind of have a, a phobia for lo scene, long scenes. I, I mm -hmm. always get a bit suspicious about why is the scene all dialogue and why is it so long. But when it comes to a scene like this, I think every movie's got to have one scene where you really take the time to see two of the characters connect on some mm -hmm. level. Um, and without it, you know, you don't really have a movie after this. And yeah. I was kind of, obviously, you never really know until you get there what you're going to get. And it was a great night for me because it was the first night in the shoot where I thought, okay, we got a big movie, you know. I'm really excited cool. about this. Yeah, cool. That's very cool. Yeah, I think it's it's the first inkling of of just how many opportunities Ben has to stop this too. Yeah. And then all of a sudden, you know, it's <laughs> like, oh God, it's just out of control. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, you remember I was playing footsie with you that night too? Yeah. I was like, all right, let's get no, that, this going, that was right? me. That was, that that was, was not you. That was my foot. <laughs> I, I thought you guys confused. <laughs> weren't, you, weren't you watching the monitor outside? Yeah, I was. <laughs> I was out on the street. With a long leg, man. <laughs> gladly murder me and step over my dead body just to be sitting here right so, now. Um, I'm bringing up the issue of murder right there. That's yeah, interesting. Yeah, that's yeah. key. She really, I mean, there's no doubt she kind of makes two or three kind of efforts to make that kind of contact and turn this into more than just a thing and, and yeah. what I like it's very clever writing I think on the part of you know Charlie Bowl who wrote the screenplay um, you know that it's sort of you know she keeps kind of putting up these signs and he keeps knocking them back but I mean how long can you do that particularly if there was already an involuntary kind of a yeah. um, sort of spark there anyway yeah and intrigue that's how I thought yeah. of it he's just right. completely intrigued by her for whatever yeah. Well, for obvious reasons, I should say. <laughs> this scene here, again, I mean, I, I want to say this is probably the, you know, the second half of the most critical part of the movie in the sense of these two getting together. And I think Giles, again, did an exceptional job. He used a special filter. I can't remember the name of it, but he made the it's pool. It's beautiful. It is an so amazing shot. And we really the pool didn't... is so beautiful, too. We're yeah. lucky to get that location. Well, that's the other thing. You know, we looked for weeks and weeks to find a pool, and the truth about school pools is pretty ugly, you know, I mean, yeah, I looked boring. at all of them. Yeah, they're boring. They're kind of concrete yeah. boxes, and 
And what people will be surprised to hear is that this was actually, like I said, in Harlem, but it's yeah. not a school pool at all, obviously. It's yeah. A, it's just a public pool that's up yep. there. You've got it's, that. A re- it's like a recreation center. I forget the name of it right. now. Yeah. But what a great place, too. I, yeah. I went – the, the whole time that we were shooting there, I was working out at the gym upstairs. Yeah. I was playing basketball with kids in the basketball court. It was like yeah. – there's just so much to do there. It was great. Yeah, and and I, you know, obviously I had to make a decision about a week or two before we start. Do I want to tell the truth about school pools, or do I want to say this is a movie and it's got to look good and it's got yeah. to look right? That and wins. So we went with this. Yeah, that, that should the, always win. The balcony <laughs> is really is really nice for the for the meat and everything too, which is really yeah, unusual. That's yeah. such a unique feature that pool. I jumped off the balcony into the pool in the last. Oh, day. I wanted to so After desperately. We wrapped. Do you remember how extremely hot it was in there and the fact that oh, Mr. Man. John Polson oh. was wearing a bathing suit? <laughs> <laughs> I, well, it was like, it was two weeks, I think, we were in this pool for. Yeah. Um, if you include, two you know, long, these sequences long, and everything wet else. weeks. And it was incredibly hot. We were shooting uh. in summer in New York City, which is hot outside. But right. once you go inside, there was absolutely no air conditioning or anything like yeah. that. It was just. It and was, you got 20 people in a room with a pool where the water room. is probably 85 degrees, too, you yeah. know? Yeah. And the other thing that yeah, was maybe really a less than that, but it was hot. It think, was it was very warm, and the, there was no space for anyone. You know, the sound cart was outside the yeah, in the right. in the lobby, and we had people upstairs, obviously lighting upstairs and everything. And if you really... wanted to talk to someone, you had to walk around the pool, which doesn't sound like a big deal. <laughs> but but if you do that all day, you waste an hour of yeah. just walking around the pool. I remember one point during which um, you were directing from a prostate position on the ground, <laughs> lying down with your head on a sandbag. Yeah, that's right. And I think you were in that position for a good couple of hours, I remember. <laughs> you were over in like the back, back from, 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 from the position I'm in right now, the back left corner of the room, lying down for like two hours. That was great. Yeah, yeah. I think I realized that the coolest place in the <laughs> The lower the better, on the ground. Right. right. <laughs> and um, so that was it. But the other weird thing about shooting at a pool is that you have to put lights in the in water the pool, yeah. and you're told all your life never put electricity yep. in water <laughs> right. and it's it's really weird we had a guy you probably remember for safety reasons we paid a guy to stand by all day every day by a safety switch yep. because Just it's in part of the deal yeah. right and yeah. he's to watch in case there's any issue then he's right at the switch to switch the whole place down yep well i'm and glad i wasn't really as aware of that <laughs> yeah <laughs> at the time Oh, by okay. the way, going back, right, Marvin Gaye, then, oh, that's yeah, when that's, we played yeah. Let's Get It On. That was great. I you hope know, we have some... They never even used that shot, though. That was on That was on my close-up. Right. Yeah. And they, they never even got used, so... It's one of those things, I mean, as a director, what you often have to do is, you know, cover a scene, and, and you, yeah. you, you always want to use one shot, like the yeah. two-shot or two actors, right. but, but it's kind of crazy suicidal, really, not to get coverage while you're there in yeah. case it doesn't work or you need to tighten do it up. Do you remember right here? Of course not. No. I forget what exactly what moment it is, but remember we thought it was going to be so funny. Yeah. And yeah. Just didn't play that that's, way. That's yeah. There was a moment where you're like, you're not going to tell anybody. And I'm like, no, of course yeah, not. Right. I thought people were going to crack up at that line. It's funny. Some I never heard laugh. anybody laugh at it. Some people laugh. I've heard people laugh. Yeah. It's, it's more like a groan, a huge you know? Laugh. It's more like a, oh, no, you know? No, I've, I've heard people laugh in a way like, oh, my God, you know, does she think that's the problem? Yeah. That yeah. he's going to tell people. Yeah. See you tomorrow. Now, coming up was another one of those moments where originally there was music all over this and it said, bad girl has arrived <laughs> and stuff like that. And very, very late, just before we locked off, literally two weeks before this movie was released, I pulled out the music cue here and just left it as crickets and dogs barking in the background and stuff. That's, I think that's much really better. smart. And because, it made it much spookier. Right. It's yeah. more about how she's falling in love. It's not like, I'm going to kill you at this point. Yeah. You yeah. Know? But it's yeah. also because, like, most audiences are used to being told by the music yeah. what to feel. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And if you don't tell them what to feel, it's kind of confronting. Yep. You're like, wait a minute, something's missing here. Someone's yeah, supposed to be telling me, is this a bad, scary moment or is this okay? And line number one, here we go. Yeah. Yeah. Again, very this clever writing on the part of absolutely. Charlie and, and some of the other writers who worked on the script, you know. It's like one kind of big lie, obviously, of the night before becomes a whole series of lies, and now he's yeah. lying about Randy's mum and that she had a, her arm yeah. in a sling and all that sort of stuff. <laughs> That's what you know. makes me laugh, is the way you play that. It's so awesome. Like, you really have yeah. no idea what is going on. <laughs> Yeah, I love you too. Oh, that's a grown. Yeah, I love gosh. you. <sighs> I 
I gotta tell you, you know, one of the hardest roles to cast, apart from those present, was Shuey Appleby in the role of Amy, because, you know, the truth is on paper that role wasn't that exciting. You know, mm. it's it's the girlfriend, and the whole point of it is that they get on great, and there's a, you know, and and often tension and drama is what makes a film interesting. So it's kind of in danger of being the kind of boring role, um, but I think Shuey just did such a great job at bringing life to a character that on the page was in danger of just being pretty bland. Right, I think she was just so cute. You know, that you needed yeah. her to be irresistible, like you want them to be together. Yeah, exactly. And it really worked. The last thing you want is to cast a girl where the audience are going, oh, you don't worry about her, forget about yeah. her. She's not, you know, you Go want for the them blonde. Yeah. <laughs> That's right. You want them to be saying, yeah. you know, how could he be doing this, you know? I yeah. think I think all the actors did that though. What was on the page was enhanced so much by the actors. Yeah. You know, uh, Jason Ritter and Clayton Crawford. I remember the f first table read that that first day, going, yeah. "What an awesome cast!" It's so yeah. much. You know, seeing it come to life was incredible. Yeah. The sequence we just saw where he's swimming across the pool and he has flashbacks. I mean, that's a fun sequence to cut. Sarah Flack, who's the editor on this film. Did a great awesome job editor, of that stuff, and as we awesome. as we get further into the movie, we'll talk more about her because her her work, um, you know, I mean, was absolutely uh, irreplaceable in this film. Yeah. She did stuff, you know, the jump cutting that we're going to see in a minute. Yeah. Um, I I love the, that. I love I it know. too, man. I read a review where they panned it, and I was just like, you know what, oh. you guys don't know what you're talking about. Yeah. It's awesome. And, uh, it's, it's key to the movie. Yeah, it's such it's such it's such a great kind of barometer of how. Madison is sort of losing touch yeah. with reality, and right. it wasn't just that stuff. It was, yeah, the scene with Josh in the car, which we'll get to, but she did she did a terrific job. She did a terrific job of all the cutting, but that stuff was really her forte. That was yeah. a cool shot too, by the way, going from yeah. outside yeah. to inside. Yeah. And yeah. This was a big day. This is one of those low budget moments where you know, yeah, can I say yeah, something real quick? Please, There's a yeah. funny moment where we both realize that we're supposed to be talking loud. Yeah. yeah. See, that was that, it right yeah, there. Yeah. We, it's like we remembered. We, oh, yeah, we're supposed to be talking loud because there's music playing when there's really not music playing on the set. You well, know? That's why I left and that And it played because, fine. Yeah, yeah, it played great, but we that's had, literally what happened. Like <laughs> ten options for that scene. Yeah. But when I saw that at Daly's, I thought, you know, there's something natural about yeah, it. It doesn't yeah. feel like scripted dialogue. Exactly. I think in the script there was all this stuff about I finished that painting or something. Oh, yeah. right, yeah. right. And yeah. then that take, someone forgot their lines and someone, you know, and it just looked They were just shooting yeah. the shit, yeah. This, um, I was saying this, you know, one of those moments in low budget filmmaking where we were supposed to have two nights to shoot this scene and then the next scene in the car. Yeah. And, and we didn't. <laughs> one day I got a call saying, well, we've got one night. Yeah, exactly. And, you know, but, but you, you That was a long through. night. I remember that. It we was a really long night. We had to really push on through. And it was so cold by the time we got outside of the car, too. Yeah. And the word was, like, if you don't get out of this house tonight, we can't come back. Hi. Don't we have English together? I like this scene. I'm like proud of this scene, I guess you could say. I yeah, laugh I like at it. It's so funny. Yeah. I'm like, oh, she's, <laughs> she's just, you know, beginning to be pathetic. I love her reveal. I mean, like you said, there's a lot of moments where Madison just shows up. Right. And you're not sure how we got there. Hi. <laughs> yeah, which was great. the same vibe we were talking about before with that Monty Python moment. Yeah. yeah. Well, that that one, was too that much. That one didn't yeah. work so well, yeah. but this she's one works really well, I think. Nice. Yeah. yeah, it does. It's great. It's perfect. She's so sweet. And uncomplicated oh, that was great you remember you wrote that line that day yeah she's so yep. uncomplicated a little subtle uh, that was great John insult kind of yeah because you go compliment or insult yep. how do we take this yeah it's getting all sexy it's getting hot in her <laughs> it's hot in. it's just great and tension the, having this girl coming, coming on to you at your girlfriend's party yeah <laughs> Not good. That's awesome. Yeah, that like right that. there is one of the best parts of the entire movie. Tomorrow is not good for me. <laughs> yes. Yeah, and this gets a laugh. My panties. I think I may have left them in your car. Hey, hey, yes. Uh, we all know what the final climax is going to be, but you know, on the way through, you want to have those moments like this and the one that's coming up at the computer. Mm -hmm. um, and it's they make such that a huge got such a huge reaction. Yeah, yeah. that's fantastic. Yeah. 
really did just see. She's such a scheming. There's no, you see, there's no shot of the panties at the end of that. Don't need them. Yeah, I don't know. You know that's, they're there. You see them in the beginning. probably one of three moments in this film that I think I wouldn't mind that shot. Oh, you know? really? Uh, of like just, me reaching down. I think we it's did not that. So right? much, it's not you so much that. Threw them away, right? It's, it's to finish the sequence. It's not about the actual shot. Okay, yeah. It just, just to, just to tie like up loose right. ends. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, but it's, you know, it's just one of those things. I don't that think it's a good laugh, too. Yeah, it does. It's so funny because these things were written, I had no connection to the to the yeah, lines, yeah, you know, where yeah. I feel like it's my line, like I'm saying that, hmm. but I was not there that day when you shot that yeah, or anything. exactly. What I love is the typo that no one noticed. See, why don't answer? Yeah, actually, Ooh. I did notice that. Where? where? Why, don't why don't answer? answer? Why Use, don't, oh. Why yeah, don't but you know what? Answer? It just looks like... I know, um, that's why we left it. We were going to reshoot it, and I thought, you know, it just looks like she's typing on the keyboard, yeah, and yeah. she's in a hurry. <laughs> that's funny. But this is kind of good. I mean, again, no music until the very end when she says it's logged off. Um, just so she's just starting to kind of warm up. Like, well, that's interesting. Yeah. Now, why would she do that? Here comes this great moment. Which one? Oh, in the locker? The, oh, I thought it was Sherry coming. I thought it was oh, no, Gosh, no, no, right? no, no, that's, that's the picture, that's right? Library, yeah. I, again, okay, Jesse, I, I love, love this. this. This is one of those moments we've all had. <laughs> I haven't seen this yeah, in totally. movies much, you know? We have no. kind of a... Oh, know, great. She's looking right. And it's like he's totally blown it. He's looked twice. <laughs> <laughs> like, at least with once, you can pretend yeah. it was an accident. Yeah, dummy. Like, how do you say to someone, I accidentally yeah, dummy. looked at you twice? <laughs> <laughs> uh. I'm not seeing Olympic swimming out there. And neither will Stanford. I know. I know. I, uh, I've got a lot on my mind right now. <clears throat> so here we are back with Dan Hedaya. And obviously... From a story point of view, we're trying to put pressure on Jesse that, you know, he's he hasn't just had this one night stand and now he's getting emails and pages, but he's he's getting kind of he's yeah. swimming his suffering. Yeah, exactly. You know? Which it's is one of the, all the facets most of important. his life. Yeah. The, you know, make a list of the most important things in your life, and that's where I'm going to attack you. It's the, yeah, exactly. the family. Mom, girlfriend, career. Although job, you know, you know what the thing friends. is though, you're hardly even attacking me at this point. You're just you're just right. like digging on me, you know. <laughs> like the way I look at it, you're not yeah. really trying to screw me yet, not right? Yet, not yet. So to speak. I mean, right. until we have the. I mean, this scene coming up is a turning point, I think, for Eric. Exactly. Character. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Where this you is, get yeah. where you get turned down, yeah. really, for the first time. Because mm -hmm. yeah. one of the mistakes Ben makes is rather than saying, like "Listen, one of the many." <laughs> one of the, yes. Rather than saying, "Look, I screwed up. You know, we shouldn't have done that." Yeah. So far, he hasn't really done that. Yeah, it's not until exactly. this scene that this he is says, happens, yeah. look, I, I told you I got a girlfriend, and I mean it, and nothing's going to go any further than this. Yeah. Yeah. Right, and you yeah. can and see you can see this is hurting her, and she's going yeah. to retaliate somehow. Yeah. But I love this scene. I think well, this is one of your best moments too, Jesse. Like, it's just so subtle, and... <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> I just love it. It's so oh, small. you know what, you guys? How many wows do we end up shooting? Wow. We shot three wows. And, <laughs> I don't think any wows ended wow. up in the locker room. One ended up in the one locker room. Up, no, there's, yeah, there's like two. Mm. There's like two. There's, um, we like the wows, though. Yeah. Count the wows next time you watch the movie, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> we, we had a running gag about oh. them on, 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 the, on the shoot. <laughs> there were some great wow opportunities. Here yeah. comes one, actually. Again, this is one of those scenes probably about three or four scenes between your two characters that you've got to get right and this is definitely mm -hmm. one of them mm -hmm. you know we we didn't have a lot of time if you remember we spent a lot of time blocking the scene through and then by the time uh -huh. we came to shoot it we had like three hours we had to get the whole thing yeah. but fortunately um you know we got it in a couple of takes really yeah i mean yeah. a lot of this film was shot in two or three takes <laughs> yeah i mean that's kind of how i Independent work and filmmaking yeah just that do too, it and we i gotta we tell you even if it. i had all the money in the world I don't know if I sort of a lot of you don't want to beat you know, it to death. Yeah, yeah. <coughs> I but liked then, it. But then you got a director like Kubrick, who you know does you know fifty takes per thing, and what he gets is so good that it makes a strong argument for that kind of technique. You know? Yeah, every yeah. you know. Or should I should say, what he got was so good. Well, right. I think you know I've heard Spielberg only two or three takes. Yeah, a lot of stuff. yeah. Minority Report was shot in an and incredibly short amount of time. Wow, like I'm sure. Something like you know, eight weeks or something ridiculous. Yeah. Wow. For a huge movie yeah. like that, I mean, yeah, I, I don't quote me on that, but I know that it was very quick and that he was happy after two or three takes. Cool. And I think there comes a point where if you've cast it well and if the script is good, 
and the actors are on fire. Of course, you know, sometimes and you've we rehearsed did on it a little this, and, and sometimes you, know, you have to go to 10, 12, 15 if yeah, there's something you're looking difficult for. Difficult camera move, really long yeah. scene, whatever. Here we I'm start sure. with the interesting editing, by the way. I can oh, yeah. Do yeah, that's, that's exactly Matt, right. It's good for Madison's you. beginning to. Erica, okay, I'm sure you'll ahead. agree Sorry. with me that um, Soder- <clears throat> Soderbergh is that way too. Yeah, it's very takes. few takes. Yeah. Just moving right along. <laughs> yep. You got it, you move on. Yeah. And it's not about like trying harder or anything like that. I think there's, you know, a lot of actors after three or four takes, they're no good. I mean, right. what, what I found with this movie was, you know, Sarah, the editor, put together basically an assembly of the whole movie while we're shooting, like any editor does. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And then I'd go to the editing room and I would say to her, okay, let's, you know, this scene here, let's look at all the takes. We, we know what the shape of the scene is. We know where the shot starts and finishes. But let me look at all the other takes. And nine times out of ten, the best one was like take one or really? the first take where technically it was right, the actors were usually the best, I found. Yeah. Huh. Ah, this is a very key scene also. We're talking about yeah. what, you know, what really moves the story. Here we see, I remember we were comparing this scene to a scene in Fatal Attraction, remember? Where Glenn Close light, is sitting, yeah, with the light yeah. switch. Yeah. But she's sitting on the floor clicking it on and off. It's that moment, I mean, you don't, you don't really see Madison alone much. And uh, there was pressure to cut this out at a lot oh, of different stages. I'm along so the glad way. you kept it. But yeah. I, I just thought, it's you know, nice just some vulnerability. Yeah, it's pretty boring if this character's just a bitch. You want to sort of feel sorry for her at the same time. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I, I like this because here's Ben kind of, it's like a flashback of like the first morning, and it's almost like things are back to normal now. Everything's yeah. taken oh, care of now. So I'm feeding my dog again, and I'm smiling, yeah, and exactly. I finally settled this little thorn in my side. Just when you yeah, think it's exactly. safe. <laughs> And that's what it's meant for. It's like yeah. Ben is desperately trying to pretend that everything is going to be okay yeah. and, and I'm going to start swimming better <laughs> and all that. And, of course, you know, this is subtle filmmaking. Yeah, that's supposed to be the club lock on the right side. And it was. That rack focus? Yeah, I don't know. I would have liked to shot of that, like a point of view shot for you. Yeah. I don't know if everybody gets you that. You know what? No, you know what? I, I, I got a couple complaints from people, friends of mine who saw it, and just yeah. people who said, wait, how did she get the keys? I don't understand. You know? Oh, right. What yeah. was the deal with that? So maybe you're right, you know? Yeah. Uh, I don't know. The keys, I understand. I mean, I, I can explain that. When you go to the kitchen, the idea is that she gets the keys. Good and, one. But you've got yep. to believe that she cuts them and then gets them back, you know? Yeah. But I'm talking more about just seeing the club lock, and that's why yeah. I, I ADR'd Kate's line so that it was clear. Even if you didn't see the club lock, you knew that someone had unlocked the mm-hmm. club lock and yeah. put it on the dash. Yeah, yeah. And of course, this is one of the big moments from you know the audience reaction, um, where Jesse's kind of checking out, you know, this email that he's received. Right. It's so funny because people don't get that I actually did take that photograph, and that's the camera that I'm holding, and that you know. Oh, I've had it doesn't most, look most like, people have... Really? Because yeah. to me, it doesn't. It looks like it's, it's some kind of digital... <gasps> that's the greatest moment. <laughs> oh, my God, everybody's freaking out right now. That I mean, I think everybody watch. gets that it's a photo of you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> as long as they know it's a photo of you... Right. Then the fact that some people maybe don't get that you took it, I don't think really matters. The point is you've emailed him a photo of yourself, and if it's not naked, it's pretty close, and it's kind of pretty... <laughs> confronting thing to do I think to a new friend <laughs> friends stop by with flowers friends email uh, nude pictures of each other what's the deal I love Sherry in this scene too because she's yeah, got that is... look of which I've seen a few times you know that sorry, yeah, kind of right, girlfriend right and he's trying to be nice uh-huh. and you say the yeah, wrong this, thing this is the look total at this breakdown look on her face, here like, yeah. when she turns to go this is the total breakdown of the relationship. And then know. he pathetically awesome. says, I'll give you a call. I'll give you, yeah, right, like like you've just started dating. <laughs> like, that'll fix it. Been in two years. <laughs> that'll fix it. Give me a call later. That'll be so yeah. much better. <laughs> Here's a wow this, moment. Yeah, this is probably a wow. Wow. Whoa. No, was that was, <laughs> that was a, a wow. Yeah. No, it was, it was a wow. But we, you, can hear, you can hear the music there, obviously. We worked really hard with TBT Records, who's uh-huh. the label that come on came on board with the movie to find some really great songs with some new bands and this is one of them you know i'm really happy with the soundtrack in this film not just the score which was mostly lewis fabray who did a great job of the actual score for the movie but and john debney but um you know the songs i think were really 
you know, they work, they feel right and they work well with the story and, and more often than not they fit into <laughs> the actual action yeah. of the movie too. Isn't he great? He's fantastic. Yeah. Jason Ritter. People should and know. You, John Ritter's son John right Ritter's there. And he is super, a comic super genius. Watch, and he walks out the door to outside, <laughs> yeah. not to the locker room. Yeah. I'm so glad you know. left that in because it always makes me laugh. <laughs> oh. This is good. Okay. This is where, in the story, obviously, Madison is started realizing she can't get anywhere with Ben. She thinks, well, maybe a way to get to him is to start dating his best friend, you know, one of his friends. Um, and it kind of backfires because Ben's like, yeah, that's cool. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> not, like, oh, I don't she's think off. She's out of my hair. Yeah. This was pretty early in the film. You'll see behind Jesse's head there's a little kid at the last couple of shots of this scene. Who just showed up and started dancing his hands yeah, around? Yeah, I remember that. You remember that? Yeah, I did. And it never bothered me, but a few people have noticed it. You know, who was that kid in the background? Yeah. <laughs> we don't have to make any friends right now. That was another close call, right? She says, "I know." Yeah. You know. Yeah. This was Shiri's first day. Uh, it was kind of. It's always hard, you know, for actors. Like you want, you want your first day to be walking into a house or something like that. Oh. And this was kind of a big scene for her, but I think huh. she did a great job. She did a fantastic job. There's the kid with the There's hand. The yeah, yeah. The, he knew we were making a film, and he, I think he was just trying to get famous. <laughs> totally. I don't deserve you. No, you don't, Ben. <laughs> what are you doing in here? <laughs> in the, when the it's men's... like, yeah, it's not a big enough deal didn't get made of that. The What's fact that? that she's in the boys' locker room yeah, right Yeah, what the <laughs> hell? That's well, awesome. at the same time, I don't think he's surprised by what's yeah. happened so far. Yeah, I mean, seriously. So far, she showed up in his lounge room. Yeah, you know, yeah. She's emailed yeah. and posed him. So this is just another kind of, another notch of her. Wow. Sort of, There's the first yeah, and only wow. wow, I think. And coming up is is kind of moment number two of Erica's like, weird editing thing, yeah. you know. Oh, yeah. Where Sarah Flack did that stuff, which was so great, I thought. And, and I, added a little sound to it, and it really worked. Yeah. In one of the original drafts that I saw, this was the first time that you guys used that. Yeah, that's and right. And I started uh, bugging you and Sarah yeah, to put yeah. in one before that's, that, that's before actually, this one. That's very true. Yeah. That's very true. That's yeah. because and I'm, it, I'm really glad you guys did it. Like yeah. I said, I read that one review, which I really took personally since <laughs> I took an active like attitude Rolling towards... That, yeah, yeah. yeah. But, uh, but, you know, I think it's great. I love it. Man, if you listen to reviews, you would never make any movie at all. <laughs> exactly. So I wouldn't worry too much about exactly. that. Exactly. But, yeah, this is, this is obviously... A moment that's meant to be unsettling for an audience, and I've seen it play with an audience where they, you know, you don't know what to think because this is meant to be a kind of big mainstream movie, and suddenly you're seeing this kind of weird cutting that yep. you would normally see in a kind of a low budget, you know, yep. art house film. Exactly. But it really works. It, it and it tells the story so well that you yeah. can't help but embrace it unless you're that one critic that didn't like it. <laughs> yeah, I think it really, I think it really helps him. you understand <laughs> that she's kind of, she's becoming unhinged you know yeah and this helps too this is such a great moment and erica you remember she, you had the ring on your finger yeah. i think and you're tapping the thing and we put the ring sound in oh you did that's really cool you can hear that clicking yeah yeah that's I, the beauty I, of sound i just want to yeah. take a second and talk about the follies the sound guys on this film were second to none we did it up at souls Ant studio in san francisco john nutt up there was the um sound editor and he put on you know, sound really brings any film to life, and this was no exception. I mean, you can watch it with an audience over and over again without all the sound effects, and you think it's going to sound pretty much like that, and suddenly someone's doing a tapping on the ring, and, you know, you can hear trucks driving in the background and stuff oh, like yeah. that. It gives the whole thing, particularly a thriller like this, it just makes it all th that much scarier. Yeah. And I mean, it makes it so much richer that you can, you know, it's so, it's yeah. so much more of real life situation going on. And yeah. another great example of the sound coming up is all the alarms, and it just kind of a yeah. escalates, you know, as one goes off and then another goes off and then another goes off. Yeah, and a lot of people don't realize that those alarms, I mean, you spend a whole day listening to different alarms that they give you, and they've, right. they, they've spent yeah. a week researching alarms. alarms. Exactly. You know, every creative decision that goes into it. Yeah, because on the day, we just had lights. Yeah. We had lights and you yeah, going, like, okay, and, now. You know? And me probably going, bars, bars, <laughs> yeah. bars. Yep. You know, if people could actually see what you have to deal with. I mean, like the sex scene that we saw recently, you know, f uh, half an hour ago, was really you and you guys making out and me calling out directions. This is John yelling, turn around. Yeah. Yeah, and it's kind of the most unromantic, unsort of anything thing you can do. And, and uh, but it ends up great. You put a bit of music with it and it looks great. It does. 
Mr. Tillman will recover. Pamela Isaacs is her name. She originally yeah. had another scene where we established her character. That's right, yeah. But you always it, leave your card outside. You know, the problem area for this uh, film was really? always... Is that in the movie or not? No, it's not in the All right. movie. Oh, I, she, I was thinking it was too. Yeah. No, the problem, the problem area for this film was always the first half hour. You know, people seem to get on board once... Once they meet, they go out and they sort of end yeah. up in the pool. But she had to get there faster. Yeah, yep. the setup was too long, and so we really had to work hard to make sure people didn't switch off. The first time we did this, we were all stressing because we knew I was going to throw the cello. So we set up a mat for oh, it, yeah. and like we were talking about, oh, be careful. <laughs> Somebody's going to catch it. I was relatively careful with it, and it snapped right in half. Yeah, remember I know. That? I remember right. the first time. And they spent, you know, a, a couple hours like putting one back together, and then <laughs> yeah. the rest of the time we used the other one, and the other one didn't break. Yeah. But I, I was careful with it and everything, and it just went boom. Yeah, the neck just right. snapped right off. I felt like a rock star. It's cool. But this hurt, by the way. I'm sorry. <laughs> it's okay. It's awesome. I appreciated it's it. Great. But do you remember? Again, this is where sound plays such a huge part. This scene was always pretty oh, yeah. good. I was but silent then at though. At ADR, Erica did some sounds of of kind of choking sounds and stuff. And nice. As soon as we put that on, it the whole thing just had a, notch, a whole yeah. new reality to it, you know. So I just want to say that Jesse, you were so intense in that scene, and I think you know it just needs no help. It's so awesome. You're choking me there. All right. Hey, I'll choke you anytime, Erica. <laughs> <laughs> This is Much another thing, scene. That actually, Shiri and I remember we called this the Othello scene because for some reason she decided this was a big scene. We talked about the scene probably more than any other scene that yeah. she did in a good way. You know, she didn't understand why, if she just had a falling out with Jesse, why was she suddenly excited to see him and all that sort of stuff. So it became dubbed the Othello scene. And I think yeah. she did a great job in it. So for anyone who's just turned on, um, we're doing a commentary for Swim Fan. I'm John Polson. I'm the director. I'm Erica Christensen. Uh, I'm still Jesse Bradford. <laughs> and I, I have been playing I'm Madison now Jason Bell. Ritter. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Madison Bell and Ben Crow. I'm Bert this Reynolds. Was, <laughs> this was a really hard area to cut because I'm you know Dustin a lot of people didn't know how she found out. I never understood that. I mean, the girl's standing outside the restaurant. It's pretty obvious that she went in there. And told Shiri everything to me. Yeah, to me too. Although I thought you guys did that in a wide shot. Did what? The, oh, it's, it's a close up. It's of a her. close up of me yeah. instead of a so wide that's, shot. So of... you know, you're you're more in. You're not. Uh, you don't get as much scope of where she is. Well, you kind of do sound wise. You can hey, hear I, the truck. I agree. Yeah, you, you can I hear the so. truck driving. But I think that's probably why. Right. You think they need. To you see zone a out a little shot. bit, and you just see a close up of Erica, and it's like, okay, you know. Yeah. Was, was this scene always intended to be music over? Like you, you don't hear what's actually being said because I think that's genius. Yeah. If, originally in the script, there was all the dialogue. It's like, Amy, yeah. are you okay? Let's. Oh stuff. right. And it was so kind of bland and boring, and you've seen that scene a hundred times. So I thought, there's a scene in a film called Harold and Maud, which is one of mm -hmm. my favorite scenes, mm -hmm. and the key moment in that film is where he's told that Maud is dead. And they play it from outside through a window, yeah. and it's so effective. And, and speaking of which, you ended up going in closer on this. Yeah, by but a it's long still, oh, you absolutely. still don't hear it. Yeah, anyone. exactly. It's still and silent. And there's still a sense yeah. of long, the long lens makes it, it feel still like feels, yeah, away. yeah. But we did because I was concerned, particularly on the DVD, that you don't see enough detail. Sure. You know? Yeah. And it also allowed me to tighten it up. This we had to reshoot. This was great, Jesse, because that shot there is the reshoot which we did on the last day of the shoot, the same day yep. we did that opening shot. Yep. And for some reason, you were so much better this day. I mean, the first time we had it and it was great, but there was a flare. Yeah. And then there was something about the day we reshot that was so much more cool. emotional or something. You can see, yeah. And the scene went up, way up that day when we reshot. That was great. Cool. Boo. <laughs> <laughs> oh. And I, you know what? I Boo. think <laughs> I think in scripts, like when my life happens, I'm like, I, I think of the way the writer would have would have written it. And, I, and so when I watch it too, I also remember. I remember this saying, you know, like he's sitting at the bench and not even, not even Jimmy. Wait, what's his name? Not Jimmy. Dante. Dante. Not even Dante. Christopher Dante. Not even yeah. Dante will sit with him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's right. You know? Yeah, and it's that's exactly why it's there. But it's also meant to keep Dante in the picture because obviously he becomes a very important character. Mm -hmm. There was a scene there 
With between Clint? me and Clay. Yeah. 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 But you know what? That's all it needed. But it was yeah. a good scene. It was, it was a, a, it was a scene. tense scene between us. And it it's fun. One, it's one I hope we put on the DVD. Yeah, that should go on yeah. there. Yeah. He's such an nice. awesome jerk. Yeah, he did a great and, job. And it's one of those things, again, like you look, down, you look at it, you analyze each line, and you realize that every single piece of information I'm told by this dialogue, I already know. From yeah. other scenes. Totally. So really, once you do that with an audience, people start shifting their seats. Yeah. And if they're not being told something new, what are they watching it for? Yep, you know? yep. So this was kind of a tough day. This was this is one of those few days oh, where... This was near the end of the shoot. A low-budget independent film really matters. You know, if, if this was a bigger movie, this would have been quite... I mean, I'm happy with it. I think it works for what it is, but, you know, we would have had much better more extras, we would have much mm -hmm. wider shots, mm -hmm. all that sort of stuff. Mm -hmm. And it's one of those times where you've just got to work out like, what's important here. It's obviously it's the story and the drama. And the other stuff, you just make it work as best you can, you know? Yeah. I think you and Dan did a terrific job. It looks fantastic. I mean, Dan one, did one a terrific thing, job, and I just reacted to it. Yeah, Dan was he's, great. He's such a good actor, man. He really is. He gives you so much to work with. But it's you were great, real. too. I remember in rehearsal... You know, you decided it was kind of funny that he was talking about yeah. steroids. Yeah. yeah. And we put that in, of course. It really yeah. works. Yeah. It's one of those moments where it's so ridiculous that you can't help but laugh. Like, you've got to be joking. Yeah. Steroids are banned at the school. Then. So this is where things have really started to go wrong. I mean, the girls somehow doctored your steroids results. She's She means business, you know. Mm, you're going down. So far, you've lost your job. You've lost your girlfriend now, and now you're about to lose your career as a swimmer. Yeah, this is no joke. <laughs> Go home. And as if the humiliation <laughs> couldn't get any <laughs> yeah. worse right about now. Yeah, what's the worst does. thing that can happen to someone in this situation? They get pushed in a pool exactly, as well. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> You're off that, the team. That are, you look that like are, an idiot. That are pantsed. Right. <laughs> or given a wedgie or, you know, something. But that's the third worst thing, I guess. <laughs> I didn't think pantsing would be appropriate. Either. Yeah, it's just not. <laughs> it just would look it's silly like, oh, for, yeah? for Klein to come around and pull your pants down. <laughs> <laughs> Although we could have just rehearsed one of those. <laughs> <laughs> so there's the two scouts. The scouts leaving. And, of course, who ends up winning but Josh. This shot was originally meant for the last shot of the movie. You know, the last scene. Oh, yeah. But Dennis Verkler, who came on in post-production and did a great job of just giving us some ideas, you know, thought it needed a breathing space there, and I think he's absolutely right. It worked well. Yeah. And I kind of like sound-wise how the crowd, you know, carries over, and it's, it really only here does it go dead, you know. Just there's something about that makes it feel like it's he brings that kind of sadness back into his home. I think this is Kate's probably Kate's best scene in the film. She's... She did a great job. You could see that subtle change right there where she feels guilty. I love that too because, yeah. you know, as justifies it as it is to, you know, to think, okay, it's, he's back into drugs. When you say that once guilty, always guilty, it's like, ouch. Yeah. This is another interesting one for visual effects. This is, remember it rained at the end of this night. Yes, it did. And this shot we're about to see originally had rain all over it. And we pay them some money to take rain out of the no shot. No kidding. Yeah. yeah. Because it didn't match Shuey's shots. It didn't match your close-up, yeah. Jesse. Yeah. So the wide shot, they just somehow get in there and they paint over it or something. Yeah. Oh, and that's what, amazing. what's actually very clearly a rainy shot becomes just, you know, a shot like the rest of the scene. That last scene with uh, me and Kate, I remember you, uh, you, you, um, you wanted it to be where we're not facing each other. Mm. And I think it plays really nice like that. Uh, but out of the whole movie, that's the scene. Where I, I mean, I try not to be too hard on myself or whatever, but um, that's a scene where I just am not happy with, like, the way it came out. Like, yeah. what I did in that scene just, like, yeah. you mean pisses the scene me off in, in retrospect. Yeah, 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 yeah. I try not to think that way. <laughs> I yeah, exactly. I'm like, I try I'm not, not allowing to. my. Yeah. I can make comments. But you gotta be honest with yourself. Sure. Absolutely. You know, and, yeah, you and that's just one moment where I'm like, come on, man, you're better than that. Uh, yeah. <laughs> this it's, is an awesome scene. This is I love great. This, yeah. claim this was me. where. This is the hottest day ever. This is also the genesis of the editing thing, where oh. one day we're cutting this scene, and it's it's always hard. You got two people sitting in the car. <laughs> That's a funny. Probably the biggest laugh. Yeah, yeah, for sure. My name's yeah. not Ben. 
you got two people sitting in a car. There's not much you could do. So I put the camera on a circular track. Yeah, that was and just awesome. And tracked around, yeah. But the best thing was, one day in the editing room where I was kind of bored, I said to Sarah, the editor, listen, I don't know what to do. We, we cut it. You know, it looked okay, but there was nothing particularly exciting. On, no, that's right. I think she accidentally did a jump cut. Ah. And she said, oh, sorry. And I said, wait a second. Let's have another look at that. So we had a look. And I said, listen, why don't I go out for a few hours? I'll come back and try cutting the whole scene like that. Let's just see what happens. And I swear to you that it hasn't changed one frame since that Since day. that? That's really? Cool. She did such a great job. And I came back in the room. This was the scene. And, and it was so good that we went back into those earlier scenes and started to layer that, that idea in that, you know, as Madison starts to lose it, you know, the editing starts to lose it a bit. Right. Yep. Yeah, you really see she's losing it now. <coughs> she calls him Ben again. Yeah. But it's like dreamlike when she when that 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 one word is like who knows if she said it or not kind of. Yes. Yeah. It's from yeah. behind. It's, it's in just her, yeah. it's, it's in just her yeah. world. It's uh yeah, exactly. The sort of thin line between reality and not. <laughs> this is really this is crazy where it takes a turn for the worse here. Again. Yeah. And here comes the biggest scare of the movie too. I've seen people jump halfway out of their seats. Yeah, great it, shot. It really, and to think, yeah. and to think, it almost wasn't in the movie. No kidding. You know. Well, yeah. Oh, I mean, that's thank one God of those this things, is in the know. movie. <laughs> there was a moment there where yeah, there were, uh... yeah, people. people... Oh, hi, Jesse. Yeah. Nice <laughs> to meet you. <ya. laughs> Thanks for sharing. Thanks for sharing, Jesse. Um, but I love this. That's this... how they wear them. <laughs> <laughs> I love this shot. This is yeah. Like... No, it's genius. It's beautiful. You're so disoriented, Whoa. just every, and we really bumped heads. It was yeah, just wonderful. Yeah, and what was amazing to me was that Klein, who incidentally wasn't that comfortable doing the whole underwater thing, yep. and I don't blame him on yep. the same, but his eyes did not move, his face yep. didn't move. He, he, you yeah. actually genuinely and I bumped ran him. into we him. We bumped heads, man. And like, it was like the guy was dead. Yep. I don't know what happened. <laughs> and he stayed under for yeah. quite a long time. It was just, it was brilliant. And it was one of those moments you kind of probably have like three of those moments in the whole movie where. You know, something just went right, and you caught it on film, yep. and it was great. Yep. And when you see that with 400 people in the crowd, and they all jump, it's it's a good feeling. Yeah. It's, it's all worth it. And you can see that photography shifts here. I mean, from the moment Josh dies, it's dark. Giles, mm. the DP, and I decided to do this process called bleach bypass, where... You know, it's boring to explain, but basically the film, <laughs> the film doesn't go through one of the kind of chemical processes... Um, that it normally would, yeah. and what it does is gives it this kind of very saturated, you know, um, very dark feeling. Mm -hmm. Takes some of the kind of life out of the film, and makes it feel like a different. You know, he's entered a different world now. I mean, someone's dead. You know. Yeah. Yeah, you lose something there. But this is Nick Sandow, who um, terrific actor. New I was York just trying to remember guy. his name. Yeah, he's really, great. Yeah, he, he was does great a lot of with. stuff. I remember Soon. thinking, like, getting off of this day of shooting and being like, ah, he's a good actor, man. That was cool. Yeah. And then every day after that, I started seeing him on this <coughs> Cheerios commercial. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, this is what I mean. This is, we worked really hard. I mean, Amanda Harding, who did most of the casting, also yeah. happens to be my fiance. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to mention that. Ew. Amanda, yeah. oh, right. Yeah. <laughs> she, um, she worked really hard to get, even in, like, one scene roles, we... Because I find in movies, that's what ruins it, you know? Yeah. You sort of see, and you know, got all the best actors in the world in the leads, and then someone who's playing the shopkeeper is, like, really Whack. bad. And <laughs> yeah. you're like, yeah. God, that just really brings me out of the movie. It sure does. And we were lucky enough to convince, also being based in New York where there's a lot of really good actors. Oh, talk Ooh, about this. This, this was is fun. Right. Yeah, because well, John, so John comes up to me and goes, so uh, you think you can climb this tree here? I mean, you feel comfortable climbing this tree? And I'm like, yeah, Steve man. Am I, the, am I the crocodile guy that's my, that's my That's my multi-purpose Australian mate. accent. Um, Crikey, mate. And, uh, and I'm like, yeah, no, I could definitely, I could probably get at least three quarters of the way up it. So we end up climbing up the whole thing and getting on the roof. Yeah. And, and then we didn't use the whole thing because we didn't need it. But yeah, like it was just cool because right. it was like, damn right, I can climb that tree. You, you know? remember this was two separate scenes though. The that's concert right. downstairs yeah, and the true. breaking yeah. into the house was such a genius thing when when you put those together. Yeah. Because yeah. it heightens the tension so much and it brings the story, yeah. in, you so, know, so into, into kind of hyper mode. To explain a little further, the house is supposed originally the house was supposed to be empty right now. That's right. right. I'm and just then, playing a concert. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And then a little later on. Yeah. That's exactly right. Originally and in the they script, combined the scenes and the, it works. The concert happened first, and then a few other scenes happen, and then he comes around and breaks in her house when she's supposed to be at work. But this is where 
obviously editing is I mean when people say you know movies made in post production they're not kidding yeah. I mean, you yeah. could have you know you could have the best material in the world and if you don't get it right at this point forget about it so yeah we kind of realized that there was a great tension opportunity to be had here where we combine these two scenes yeah even though none of us knew when we shot it that, <laughs> no. you know there's supposed to be people playing downstairs when you're upstairs yeah it the, just the energy is still there we were also really very lucky yeah. that this was they were both in the bleach bypass period because it wouldn't Ooh, have looked good yeah. Oh, wow. yeah. so it just like worked out and we put it together and it's you know proved to be I think one of the best sequences in the movie. Absolutely. And you know, one of the moments where audiences have responded to the suspense and stuff yep. like that. Because, you know, one thing worse than breaking into someone's house is breaking into someone's house when they're downstairs. Right. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> and the the, the, the the sort of catch was supposed to come, you see that flash of light go across uh, Dante's face. That That's was right. supposed to be Madison getting home. Yeah, in the car. Right. So the tension wouldn't have really started until then. And that's instead, right. the tension's there the whole time. And then that's just kind of a cool accent that punctuates Dante suddenly being there. And exactly. like, what's going to happen now? Is Ben in trouble or exactly. is this his ally or what? This is it. This, this is, is great. It. Yeah. The, yeah. That. There it is. That's yeah. supposed to be yeah. Madison's Oh, car. that yeah. is fantastic anyway. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah. yeah. She found you here. So it's Jimmy DeBella. No shit. And That's one point, of the biggest laughs in the entire film, too, it is. by yeah. the way. <laughs> That's awesome. She's going to kill you. Like she did Josh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Jimmy's great in this scene. And now, now people start to realize this guy's actually got something to do with this movie. He's not just going to hang yep. around the periphery, you know. He's actually involved in, in the plot here and becomes more so in the next half hour, the last half yeah. hour of the movie. Yeah. Christopher. Christopher. <laughs> This is, I love this. I love, I love this look, look, look on See, his this, face. Look at what you're wearing there. It's not actually what you're wearing in the cello scene. Oh, but wow. But because it's so dark, we got away from oh. it. You see, that's... I, hey, I never would have known. Look, no. Yeah, me no too, and I was know. wearing it. Yeah. That was, that, was <laughs> really, <laughs> that was really the only time we wondered whether we could combine the two, but of course we would. And you could have ended the scene right there, but you left yeah. this, which I is, again, this awesome. Cause you be, Dante he begins, in his little world. Right, he begins to realize... With that tiny little bed. Yeah. And a tiny little grin on his face. The scene coming up was something we, we shot after, well after the original shoot because there were a couple of moments like in any movie where we weren't convinced the audience had got them for whatever reason in the test screen. So we, we shot this scene yep. where Dante actually comes to you That's great too. and says, I'm going to take you to see something. Um, originally, you just go without him mm -hmm. um, because you see an address or something and it didn't feel as good as... You know, involving Dante more in the story. Like I said, he was proven yeah. to be such a popular character. Yeah. It's New York City. Woo. Love that city. Had a great time. Yeah. Summer in New York. So this is Tribeca. This is one of the few times the camera is actually in Manhattan. I mean, it's weird Coming going all the way to New York to shoot a film and never seeing it. Yeah, really. seriously. Shooting in Jersey and shooting in Brooklyn and everywhere Long else. Long Island. But this was right by the production office. and It and really is. Of, it's right by the production yeah, it's office. about a block from the production yeah. office. And made a lot of sense. Whereas that's in Brooklyn. Yep. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Oh, now, there was, we were playing around with the idea of having the nurse be Madison's voice. Yeah, was just that? her first line, just to give yeah. her a scare. Again, this was combined in the right. editing. This was never in the script that these two scenes were happening simultaneously, but but it seemed like a good idea to, to show Madison beginning her pursuit of Amy while Ben's off busy, you know, doing his uh, kind of researching about Jake Donnelly, which is one of the right. reasons why Dante drives you, because we needed to free up your car, yep. you know, the truck. Yep. If Dante had driven you to see Jake Donnelly, then Madison was in a position yeah. to take the truck. And meanwhile, my truck's right in front of her house, too. Exactly. You know, so it's exactly. perfect, yeah. Amazing how things kind of work out weird like that. Well, yeah, it was half Sick. working out. Half of it was like a lot of stress in post-production. Yeah. Trying to work out how to make sense of all yeah. this piece of the jigsaw yeah. puzzle, you know. Well, it, really does, it really does end up working, though. Yeah. Yeah, I love the way this is in a cut. And Louis Fabray, the composer, you can hear the music. I mean, he, it's one of those like Hitchcockian kind yeah. of scores where... Yeah. It's not just music that's been slammed on. It actually fits. Like, mm -hmm. this is all kind of slow and creepy. And then whenever we go to the car, it, it sort of picks up the pace and the energy. And Yeah. And again, this sequence always worked okay in the editing. But once we put that score on, um, it just took it to a whole new level. 
Like hear the music here. So suddenly it's like doom, 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 right. doom. A little shout out to Monroe Man. Right. He's Who played Jake Donnelly. He's Monroe asleep and, and right now, right in a coma. Name? Remember the, n- the nurse's name? Patricia Ray. An actress, Patricia Ray, yeah. Okay. And um, she plays the nurse um, and did a great job. Although this scene was kind of changed quite a lot. Originally it was like one long scene. And then, of course, when we got the idea to intercut it with a chase like this, um, you know, it ended up, we sort of cut quite a lot of the dialogue, but I think it works really well. Right. She, did, she was fun, too. She did a great job, and, and we had fun. That was that was an, an added shot too of your hand coming in and grabbing it too. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Yeah. That was very... matter of fact, that was the last thing we shot in the entire movie. Uh, contrary to we keep saying that, but that was the last thing we shot during the reshoots. Uh huh. And was the reshoots what? were what five months ago, six yeah. months ago. Yeah. yeah. This was originally a phone conversation that happened between Kate Burton and Jesse at night time. But you can see we shot it so it looked like day because yep. for various reasons of the other things, we, you know, this is the thing, it's kind of a domino effect. You change something and suddenly it all Everything works else. except yeah. it's got to be during the day. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. So we went back and shot the phone call scene and I think it, it worked out great, you know, because it really, up until this point, whenever I tested this movie, audiences kind of got lost for about 10 or 15 minutes around this point. Right. Yeah. And These new shots. There was that last yeah. shot, jacket yeah. coming off the it was thing. Probably, you're right. It was probably the absolute last, last thing yeah. we shot in the movie. Counting reshoots. And here comes Erica on her way up to Amy's room. Looking now, slightly originally, distressed. Yeah, the <laughs> hair getting slightly more crazy and everything. Yeah. <gasps> this was one long steady shot. This is a shot, great remember? shot. Yeah. Right. Okay. Take you Backing up into the elevator. Actually, into the elevator and then back out. Remember, there was a couple of takes where I put myself in there, but. I were, mean, yeah, you were walking with us. Yeah, no, I no, remember I come in, I was like oh, dressed up were... as a doctor. Oh, right. But it just <sighs> didn't felt. it didn't feel as kind of scary to have someone else in the elevator, you mm-hmm. know? And it just felt better that she's completely alone now. Yeah, it's like vacant. Yeah. Yeah. No one to... And the great thing about, this was an old abandoned real hospital rather than a set. Yeah. And the great thing was we could actually light both of these floors and take it up without cutting the camera at all and just take the steady cam right up through the thing, which again is really unheard of on a movie of this scope, but because Giles thought laterally um, about how to do it and how to shoot it, um, it was just possible to do, you know? You know, this was the day. This was the day. This was supposed to... The day you guys shot this shot, this long steady cam shot, was the one day I was supposed to have off my oh, one yeah, day off yeah, on the whole yeah. shoot, oh, and you no. guys brought me in anyway, <laughs> thinking that they might have time to squeeze in this one shot of me or scene of me. <laughs> yeah. I sat around all day long oh. while you guys fought laterally <laughs> oh, <laughs> on no. my day off. I'm, glad, I'm not angry. I'm, I'm, I'm just you, saying that's what happened. I'm glad you still remember that. <laughs> oh, yeah. I remember that. <laughs> I remember that, I had too. one day off, and that, that was, was it, man. It was, the scene, <laughs> it, was, it was the scene where originally, and I... To this day, regret not getting it. Wait, Sherry. Okay, comment. Yeah. Sherry's actually sleeping right there. <laughs> yeah, that's true. She's that's really true. asleep. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because if you I don't look blame at the dailies, her, I would do that too. <laughs> the scene where I'm supposed to be passed out anyway. And that's great, know? unless you start rubbing your nose while you're asleep, which she exactly. did. <laughs> she did. <laughs> she started rubbing her nose and moving around. I'm like, I Sherry, remember... it might be better if you lie still. And then I realized she's actually asleep. Yeah. I, I had to ask you how you did that shot. Yeah, I didn't yeah. understand. Rig the and thing. You put the, the, you put the, the yeah, you put the um the speaker the on speaker, the camera, like yeah. on the same platform as the camera, and move the whole thing. Yeah. And that was when one you of told me things. that, it was like an aha moment for me. I was like, oh, that's how you did it. You yeah, know? that was one of those things you sort of you come up with that idea, and you're like five weeks out from the shoot, and you explain it to the crew, and they think you're nuts. Yeah. And, no, that was fun. And and then the next week, and then suddenly producers start arriving and saying, you really want to do this, it's going to take a lot of time and money. Yeah. I don't know if it's going to look that great, blah, blah, blah. But you sort of stick to your guns, and I think it it, work, you know, it works great. Hell it's yeah. just yeah, one just... of those moments where you realize that you're sort of slowly getting into the kind of head of Madison Bell, and yeah. it's, it's not all pretty in there. Yeah. Oh, no, it's it's kind of twisted. It's... Now, originally, this was Jason Ritter. In fact, yep. that is Jason Ritter. Yeah, that, that shot. was, yeah. Uh, because Randy was meant to be the character um, right. that that did all this, but it it turned out because she, because of the whole cousin thing that Dante was kind of a more I don't know. There so we go. He really had this. insight into how badly she deserved deserved to, you know, exactly. she needed to be. He was the one person up. in the movie, apart from Jesse, apart from Ben Cronin, who really that got knows it. that she's kind of 
a freak. Yeah. And, and it I also, think right there, it's that the was person that takes Jesse to see Jake in the hospital. Yeah. So it made perfect sense that he's the one that drives him to the hospital. Yeah. And, and I think I killed Josh. But I tried to kill Amy. I'm already going to spend... <laughs> I was yelling so loud in your ear. Yes, it did hurt. I, hope, yeah. <laughs> put a, I think we put an earplug in for Erica because it was so loud. Yeah, right. Yeah. right. Didn't you? Did we? I think we put an earplug in. Uh, for oh, you whoops! Yeah. I don't seem to recall. I remember. That. I remember thinking it's okay because the hair's in front of your ear, but I'm pretty sure. I remember oh. uh, Barbara Kastner. Yeah, the, Barbara the props. props. Lady. Yeah, she was so cool, and she had she had like a a, a a scalpel that she had made that was like a safety one that wasn't right. gonna hurt you, but it was really crappy. And yeah. she just, it, I just, oh, it, it stuck with. Oh, it was with, tin. Yeah, like yeah, yeah, the, yeah, The yeah. blade was tin. And it was like a joke that stuck with us the whole time. She, I was like, <laughs> what's up with this? And she goes, it's kind of crude, huh? <laughs> and just the word crude, like, stuck around for such a long time. Yeah. That was a completely different day, completely different garage, that yeah. shot of him. <laughs> and nobody that gets was, a big nobody laugh. Nobody was there, yeah. You know, I've him, seen him this movie. Like I that? saw this movie on 42nd Street in New York nice. yeah. with just regular people, you know, yeah. not, not like a screening of any kind, just the people who bought the ticket. And they clapped when he puts oh, the glasses that's back. That's awesome. awesome. Yeah, yeah, I thought that was a great response. And this is a great setup here. I'll ring your doorbell and apologize myself. Yeah, yeah so when the doorbell happens, mm -hmm. you think maybe yeah, it's yeah. the cop, particularly when you look out the window and there's the cop car. You Do know? you remember the end of the video scene where we cracked up every time? I just could, or maybe Which it was one? just me. The end of the scene where Kia steps out with the video camera. Yeah. And then you grabbed Erica and pretended, remember? Like, it was like, no. grab her. I, I've got footage of it. Really? really? I <laughs> lost it every time. It was so funny because it was the most serious scene. Now, this was a hard, i got to admit, this was a difficult scene because when we tested this scene, they didn't get I didn't it. originally have a close-up of your handcuffs. Right. You know, and people wondered, how the hell did she get out of this police car, you know? And it was really a deal-breaker. It was like, I would look through the cards from the test screening and people would be right with the movie. Now that we'd done the reshoots right up until this scene and the last 10 minutes from here to the end, they'd switch off. Yeah. And and when I really analyzed the cards, there were like two or 300 of them, I realized this scene had the, you know, had a common theme of people not just not believing the whole thing. And so we yeah. put in this shot coming up. Right, right. This thing, this, that, yeah. right? And it, from that moment on, Nobody ever mentioned this scene again. That's pretty cool. I mean, of 300 people, maybe one person would say, could she really get out of the car? But even that person wasn't that kind of upset about yeah. it. Yeah. Whereas before that, they just completely felt like they were being yeah. sort of force-fed something. Right, so again, Part those the... aren't my hands. Yeah. <laughs> Part of the whole point with movies, I think, is suspending your disbelief. Yeah. You have to do but it. But you've got to help. You know, it's yeah. like you've, oh, got, you've yeah. got to kind of get them to the point where they can. And, and it was just one of those deal-breaker moments where they're like, you know what, I want to suspend my belief. I want to have fun watching this movie. But, but, I, but you're not this far. Yeah. yeah, you're going to have to help me a yeah. little bit. So all I did was put that shot in of her moving the hands and it just... It, That's cool. It literally turned the, turned the movie around in it, terms of its response. It does all work that way. At least everything makes sense. You know, you do have to... It, some, some of it is implied, but it makes sense when you know what's supposed to have happened. Yeah. I like this scene because you guys are great in it, you and Shiri, but also every time we've had a kind of a soft moment between these two characters, we've had that kind of theme come up, which I really like. But this is the one time we originally had a cue, a cue written for this, but we pulled it out, and mm -hmm. it was like one real moment between you two where... You know, movie music doesn't come in, yeah, and you just have this kind of moment of connection where that doesn't happen, and I and I kind of like that, you know. Yeah, it's like we take away the kind of glamour of it and just make it about these two people, where one of them apologizes to the other, and then of course, the creepy music starts. <laughs> it's. That, didn't what, didn't that shot used to go all the way over to the window? Yeah, it was kind of boring. Yeah, I mean, no, I guess it, it, took too, it took too long. This is a new shot too, isn't it? Yeah, it that just, was a pick That's that's because really smart. It just ties everything together. We go, okay, cop car. All right, mental note of that. Now, well, what? the reason for that was because when he gets to the window in a second, a lot of people didn't know it was a cop car. Yeah. You know, oh. I thought you'd be able to read that it was a cop car. So right. I thought we better put in a shot of the cop car so that when he looks out the window, you know what it is he's looking at. You know. Right. And this is freaky, too. It's just one of those moments that would mean nothing in a regular movie, but since this is a thriller and you say, I got it, and she doesn't answer. Yeah, yeah. and people go, <gasps> what, what, what? Oh, she's, oh, she's yeah. making a sandwich, okay. <laughs> yeah. And 
yeah. this like, is great too because yeah. people get it when they when you come back and there's only one yeah that's yeah. the first statue sign like right. what yeah so this is what i mean you couldn't really tell that was a police car oh, oh see i, I already can. knew so yeah <laughs> i guess it's because i knew but I didn't. this is a cool shot this is a 360 right yeah if you watch you, this yeah, it goes you, right exactly. around and what i loved about it is you don't see that often enough in movies. <laughs> normally, you would rack focus to the car, mm -hmm. which we did on a few takes. But this is but great then, because, ooh, it's yeah, freaky. It's much scarier. Yeah. Because you're looking at his neck, and you're thinking, why am I being told to look at his neck? What's yeah. going to happen there, you know, instead yeah. of at the Someone's car? Someone's going to grab him. Yeah. So by now, we've come around 360, and we're looking back yep. at the door. And i got to tell you, and this is a tribute to the crew and to Giles and everybody, that we should not have been able to do that <laughs> shot yeah, in this yeah. movie. With the kind of resources that we had, yeah. you know? Yeah, big time. There she is, oh. bang. That was a bruise. Wasn't that wasn't it? your hand either. Did you, are your hands in this movie? <laughs> <laughs> Ever? My hands are very ugly. <clears throat> I'm just kidding. I love the pastrami in the shot coming up. There's like food on the ground, right? Yeah, yeah like she's, she's holding in, the like sandwich. Like bologna or something. Yeah. The bologna mm -hmm. shot. Watch what happens here. There it is. There it is. <laughs> well, you know. Okay, this is my claim to fame. The camera whips back over. And right? you're gone. Yeah. Yeah. That's so tough. now, So now, the original shot was it comes off of me and it whips over to the bed and then cut. And remember, I said, wait, why don't we whip back to me and then I'm gone. Yeah, that's, that's And right. it was a yeah, great yeah. idea and everybody was happy. And, and then you, John, made it even better by having the whip actually melt right into the car, yeah. which is even better. Well, I would love so. to take the credit for that since there's only three of us in the room. <laughs> <laughs> but it certainly was my idea. Dennis Berkler, who I mentioned before, yeah. who came on very late, yeah. but with some great ideas. Because you get to a point you've seen the film a million times you and know yeah and you want someone to come in and just you know give you some feedback and yeah. he he was the guy who cut that shot well that's a good one and he did a great it was job. Uh, it's like it one upped you know it was one upped this is probably the most significant reshoot we we did in the whole movie originally this scene jesse arrives there's no sign of shiri and you and Erica, remember, have this exchange, and then you realize Shiri's already underwater. Right, I was up top, I was on the balcony. And I think it was a really interesting idea on paper, but when we screened it, people just didn't believe that, that she, she would still right. be alive. Yeah. You know? So we wrote this scene, you know, and, and with Fox's help, went back to the pool. And I wrote those lines. I remember because I, I, I didn't know what I was going to say <laughs> yeah. until we rolled. Here, my one complaint on this scene is that he says, it, you know, she's, she's like, just tell me you love me. And he's like, I can't do that. Uh, just do it, you know? <laughs> <laughs> I do love you. Now put the, you know, put my girlfriend down, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know? But hey, it's a movie. Remember that suspension of disbelief thing I was talking about? Yeah. <laughs> That's key right there. She was underwater for about seven days. <laughs> it's really right. quite amazing that she survived at all. We, yeah. It was a combination of things. We had a double, and what would happen was... Ah, uh, the double couldn't do it. Yeah, unfortunately, the stunt double we had was got completely freaked out. Understandably, but kudos to Sherry. And Yeah, and then Sherry uh, said, well, listen, let me try it. And she, she was very scared too, but I think, Whoa. you know, she did it, and she did a great job. Absolutely. Like, that's a double there. The wider shots tend to be a double. But no one was ever underwater... Really, obviously, longer than they could hold their breath. Yeah, but we also—I mean, we obviously we had um, underwater breathing. Uh, yeah, exactly. Stuff going, you know. So generally, so that we could sit down there for a set, while, yeah. hear action, <laughs> hear action <laughs> pumped in through um, the through speakers, underwater, underwater speakers, underwater, right? And then you know, start the scene without having to actually take a breath and dive down, and you know. Exactly. Oh man! And, oh, you know, yeah, sorry, yeah. I'm apologizing already. <laughs> you know what though? I mean, yeah, me, me and Erica are like sharing a moment here because we really kind of drowned each other during the course of this. I think her more than me. She drowned me more than I drowned yeah. her. But we do, we both take really? credit for actually scaring each other for a couple moments. Yeah. Where it's like we know we're supposed to be so intense, but we literally are out of breath. And it's like you're saying to yourself, "Am I going to get to the top this time?" And then, and then you don't, and you're like, "Damn!" You know. You know? It was so funny to, to, to try and drown because I'd be treading water, remember, John? I'd be treading water, yeah. and then I'd just, you'd say, go. And I, okay, and I'd have to let go uh, and kind hard. of go and, underwater. And, and when you're, choking. When you're not the person in the pool, you know, the person in the pool's acting like they're drowning, and it's really hard. You've got to be really careful to know when they actually are drowning. Right. <laughs> you know, yeah, exactly. You don't want to just keep rolling the camera. <laughs> you're going, wow, she's doing a great job. But but then I'd stop. I mean, I'd we'd just roll, and I and I'd drown and drown, and then I'd yeah, stop drowning and say, I mean, "All right, treading this, this water for scene, a minute."
this whole scene, I think we gave ourselves three days, which sounds like a lot, but again, incredibly short amount of time to do something like this. Yeah. And you guys would just get in and do it. I, th I think it's a tribute to the three of you in this movie that there was a real sort of sense of let's just get this done. And, and you know, I never had anybody say, oh, I'm not ready or I'm too cold or any of that sort of stuff. <laughs> um, which we might have had. I think a I lot can see my feet moving. I freak out about that. I'm like, look, I'm treading water. I, I think it's know. just a reflection. Well, see, that's what everybody tells me. So, okay, good. She's dead. I'm dead. We think. <laughs> uh -huh, uh -huh. Slow fade to black on that. That was a hard scene to cut. I mean, we cut that forever. Yeah. But I really? think in the end we got the right balance of all the elements. That's great. And then that was, that's what I said. That's just wow. another take of the other shot. Oh, yeah. But with very wow. different colour timing so that it's much sunnier and brighter right. and happier. Yeah, yeah. And there's me clean shaven for the first time in a week uh -huh. over the course of this movie, that yeah. is. And you guys in, in in getting in the truck and driving off. Happy ending. Which is cool. As you happy know, as it can be. Yeah, exactly. We talked about this ending a million times, yeah. trying to decide if I it wanted was, to come back. And it's a little <laughs> open. It's what's you know, classically known as an open ending. Yeah. But and it I, totally works because how I'm much better that. could you make it? Yeah. How much happier can it be after all that? You but know? Also, I'm big on like once once the movie's over, it's over. I see too many movies where the last ten minutes is being told what you've just seen, totally. you know, yeah. right. be like told what you should feel about it, stuff, and, all that stuff. Yeah. and I reckon, you know, once Madison's dead, you want to you want to have a quick moment of you guys back together. Of course, it's not the same as it was, but hopefully, yeah. there's a sense of you guys are going to get over this. Yeah, and originally and it was written that they went their separate progress. ways. Remember yeah, they went that's their separate true. ways at the that's end, true, and we yeah. all went. But they have to be together at the yeah. end. Yeah. they have to make it. And then we tried versions where we end on the drowning, and we don't come. But uh, you know what? It's too dark. This this kind of movie, um, it's a certain kind of a genre movie, and you want to feel like at the end that things get kind of back to the Yeah, end, yeah. You know? Well, right, that yeah. chapter has ended. And the and guy's lost his swimming career, really. You hope that he might get it back, but you don't see any evidence of that. Yeah. So why not at least, you know, Give him him keep girl. the relationship? Yeah. yeah. And he's learned something. He's apologized. He got it all wrong. Yeah. But uh, hopefully they're going to just try and move on from that. Yeah. So that's about it. Uh, we there hope you, you enjoyed the uh, commentary. And I sure did. I did yeah, too. Me too. <laughs> I learned a lot. That was we great. hope you enjoyed it as much as we did. So thanks a lot, yeah. guys. Hope you enjoyed the DVD. Yeah. Buy, buy some... two of them. <laughs> now let's see some.